Oh, what's up? What's up? Um, shit, I need to turn this up. I should have prepared. I should have prepared, but I didn't, because I'm stupid. All right. Oh, hey, I get to do my epic announcer voice. Time never waits. It delivers all equally to the same end. You who wish to safeguard the future, however limited it may be, did not start reading early enough, so you fucked up, son! Damn it! Oh, well, anyway. Good start, good start. Um, this is, this is, this is... You'll see. I'm showing, this is the introduction to the game. This is the, um, what you see when you start a new game. The reason I'm showing this off is because it has my favorite song in the game. So that's why, that's why. And it's got boobies, I guess. I didn't know those were there, but now I do! The things you learn when you relook at shit. See, that song. And my dog sneezing. Are you serious? You're an idiot. That's not creepy at all. And a suicidal girl. And what the fuck is that? song if you want to know what that song was it is called burn my dread um it's like the last battle remix or something or other oh it's still going i'm gonna let it go let it go shit this is the song that inspired my upcoming rap career yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. Hey. My dog is licking my sheets. I don't want my sheets all wet. Well, oh, emo. You will notice a lot of characters in this game have that whole hair covering one eye, the other eye clear thing going on. It's very odd. I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's kind of weird. It's not creepy at all. Let's just let's just stand in like the blood. That's cool. Anyway, now after this is when you start getting into like you start you enter your name and all that shit. So I already did this. I just wanted to show off this You're little late. beginning. I've been waiting so, a long time for you. Um, I am going to load up the game file that I already have running, and then so I can show off some of the battle system and whatnot and talk well, about the game a little bit. So yeah, yeah. Please sign. I was so Oops, that's a little off center. As you can see, this is Persona 3 FES, not just regular Persona 3, it is the expansion to Persona 3. As you can see, it has two options. The journey is, um, that's the original story, that's Persona 3, basically. And, um, well, excuse me, the answer is the expansion part, it's an added storyline. I actually don't know what happens in that, I actually haven't played this one. Um, I've only played the original Persona, so I'm not sure exactly what the storyline is for the answer, but I want to play back through all of this, um, because it's been a while since I played Persona 3 anyway. Um, so, anywho, before I actually load this up and get started, I'm just going to describe, I'm going to describe Persona, these games. Now, I believe this only holds consistent with Persona 3 and Persona 4, 
Because I played Nocturna, and Nocturna, I think it's Persona 2. It might just be its own standalone game. But anyway, um, Persona 3 and Persona 4 are similar. They're similar styles, similar gameplay, uh, similar systems, etc. Persona 4 is just kind of like, you know, the um, more advanced version. I'm trying to think. Updated. The more updated version of the system. And basically the system is, in Persona, you have, um, you know, you get your main character. They're going to school. Uh, I believe it's a high school in both. And while you're at this high school, obviously you meet a bunch of people. And while meeting these people, you get these things called social links, which um, each one is related to, I'm not sure what they actually call them, but... Like, you know how you have those decks of tarot cards that, like, you know, gypsies and shit, like, they try to use the fortune tell and whatnot, all that shit? Um, Arcana. That's what they're called, right? I think? Whatever, fuck it. Yeah, the Major Arcana. That's what it is. I'm smart, yo. Shit. And then watch me get that completely wrong, and I'm gonna, that's gonna make me sad. But anyway, so, each one is related to an Arcana and the tarot card deck stuff. And so, you know, like, you have stuff like the Fool, the Magician, the Chariot, Death, Devil, Tower. Those are all the, those are some of the ones I can remember off the top of my head. And so you meet a different person that represents each one of those. And you can develop those relationships. What happens is, you are, you're basically stuck on a calendar. Like, you go day to day like you're living a regular life. Um, and so what happens is... During the day, you can... Let's get rid of this annoying-ass blue screen. Um, during the day, you can... You go to school first. And sometimes there's, like, a little lesson where, like, maybe a teacher will ask you a question. Um, and then if you answer it right, like, your knowledge goes up or whatever. That kind of a thing. Sometimes there's a little mini-events in there. And then there's the time after school, which is where you develop those social links. You can choose to hang out with um, different social links. Now, uh, it's actually very specific about whether, about how you advance up. Like, you get, there. there's like a little specific event and you get points for those events. Um, and then like, you have, when you're actually ranking up, you talk with the people and like, they'll ask you questions where you need to respond to them and the different responses will give you like different, uh, po amount, a different amount of points. And then, you know, the more points you get, the faster the rank will advance. So it's actually kind of, it's really specific about getting shit to advance properly. There's actually guides online for like the perfect playthrough of maxing out all social links. It's essentially impossible to max out all the social links without that guy. It really is because um, I think the first time I played Persona 4, Persona 4 was actually the first Persona game I played. And I think I didn't even get, like, half the social links. Because, um, sometimes, like, something has to, just something random has to happen during the day. A little event to give you enough points to not waste a day where you're just hanging around. Because, um, like, if you don't have enough points to actually advance to the next level, you just hang out with them that day. And then you get a set amount of points for that until finally there's enough to rank up. Anyway, it's pretty complicated. But, um, yeah, so you do that. And the reason you'd want to do that is that when you fuse personas together, I'll actually show you. I'm not going to actually fuse personas right now because this is very early in the game. But, um, let's see. I only have three personas, I think. I'm not going to fuse them together. But so, like, see as you can see this normal spread thing. So let's say I would put together Pixie and Absaris. And I'd make this dude. And see how you can see right there? Um... Apparently I have a commie rank or something, I don't know, whatever. But, um, so because my social link rank is 2 right now with Magician, um, I get that bonus experience there, right? So that's, that's why it's good to fuse together, I mean not fuse, to uh, advance the social link. So, that, you know, the higher your social link rank is, the more bonus experience you get when you fuse them together. So that personas are more powerful right at the start when you fuse them. Um, so that's what you do during the daytime. Then during the nighttime, you kind of have like a secondary day, potentially. You potentially have a secondary day 
where um, you can do the same things. Most social links aren't available at night. Usually there's like specific ones. I know in this game there's two very specific um, social links. Thank you for knocking my control all over the place, you douche. Um, there's two specific social links in this game that can only be done. They can only be done at night. I think there's. I think that's also with um, Persona 4. There's a couple that can only be done at night. And so, you have that, or you have where I am right now, so let's leave. Leave. You have where I am right now, and you do this in Persona 4 too, except it's kind of different. In this game, you come to this place called Tartarus. In Persona 4, you just enter a TV at midnight. <laughs> kind of different, but, um, anyway, so... In Tartarus, they're actually, they're both a little different in that this game is just one big-ass dungeon that you just slowly advance in. And see, like, if I go over to this teleporter here, I have the teleporter, I'm on the first floor, obviously, and then I have a teleporter up to the fifth floor, that's where I've made it to so far. And then in Persona 4, there's actually different levels. There's actually, um, like, different stages and whatnot. It's all in one centralized location. But it branches out to different levels. This is all just one tower by itself. And so I think, I can't remember exactly how many floors there are. I think there's like 80 something floors. Um, and as you can see, I can teleport up to the fifth floor. There's a cer certain floors have teleporters and like kind of mini boss fights in them. And so um, once you advance to that level, thankfully, you don't have to keep going back through. And the reason why it's good that you don't have to keep going back through is that in this game, if you look at my status right there, underneath my health bar, you see the smiley face that says great. That's like his fatigue level, or his uh, his health level, I guess. And um, each character has a specific health level that I believe deteriorates with every turn you take in the tower. I believe. I think that's how it works. I'm not exactly sure. But um, in this game, you go from great to just, you know, normal to tired to sick. The longer you spend in here, so, and once you hit, once you start hitting tired, and then once you get down to sick, you start being less effective in battle, like your stats go down. And so, there's only really a limited amount of time you can spend in here per night, which is, that's not how it works in Persona 4. In Persona 4, you can spend as long as you want in there, basically until you no longer have the health or mana to, um, to stay there. That's pretty much how it works in that game. Um... So, there is a limit, which is actually kind its kind of good, because it makes it so you don't have to grind for a... Well, it kind of forces you to not grind for a long-ass time. But there's really you really don't need to. I'm not, not in my experience, there's not really much of a need to grind in these games. You usually get... Um, there is a little bit, obviously. I mean, come on, it's a Japanese RPG. What Japanese RPG doesn't need a little bit of grinding? But, um, it's not bad. And so, and eventually, again, I'm very, er I'm very early in this game. Eventually, you start getting more party members. I think there's like, you can have um, your main character plus three others in your party at any point in time. And I believe there's something like seven party members, six or seven other party members. So anyway, now I'll show you how the battle system works a little bit. You gotta find. That's the way up. Wow, this is cool. There's not. Oh wait, this is the fifth floor. I'm retarded. There are no enemies on the fifth floor. I'm retarded. All right, let's let's try this again. All right, so um, in this game, as you can see, my dude, my dude's going all stabby stabby right there. You can run up to things and try and surprise them. I think I just did. I surprised this motherfucker. Surprise, bitch. Um, so you can do that, and if you manage to sneak up on them and hit them from behind like that, as you can see, you get the player advantage. Which gives all your characters a turn before the actual fight starts. So in this one, as you can see, you know, you got the generic attack, skills, items. Um, this tactics thing, I don't really, it's not, I, I, I don't know, I don't know if more tactics come in the later parts of the game, I can't remember, but there's really, you can either tell them to act freely, which is just the AI. Um, this will make them... This I actually have the, set, I have the girls set on. They'll heal you when you get down to a certain amount of health. I think it's like once you start getting like less than 60% health, they'll start healing you. Um, 
And then you have this, which will just, they'll attack, you know, whatever you point out, like say, just go attack that one. Um, and then, so then, yeah. There's not very many tactics, obviously. Then there's, you can change your personas around, or, um, you can run. Or do nothing. So anyway, that's the battle. Unfortunately, in this game, you can't, act, you, it's impossible to control your AI companions. It's impossible. You can't do it. It's very annoying. It kind of, it adds a little bit of difficulty to battles that really shouldn't have been there to begin with. I'm not entirely sure why they made that decision, but that was fixed to Persona 4, and I believe it's also fixed to Persona 3 Portable. Uh, I'm not sure because I don't have a PSP, but if the FES expansion exists in, por in Persona 3 Portable, that means Persona 3 Portable is definitely the best version of this game out. And you should definitely get that one solely because you can control your party members. It is a constant source of frustration to not be able to <laughs> control my party members in this game. It's very annoying. Um, but so... Yeah! Suck it, bitch! So yeah, um, obviously that fight was very easy. That's kind of how it goes. Most random fights are very easy. And the only real difficulty comes when you start getting into, you know, like, boss fights and whatnot. So, oh, of course, of course. So, when you let an enemy hit you like I did, because I was too late on trying to stab the motherfucker, they can run into you and they can do the same thing. They can get a turn advantage on you. Um, so, you know, make sure you don't let them run the fuck into you. But anywho, so now that's the that's the battle system. Obviously, not too terribly complicated. It's a, it's a Japanese RPG. It's very, very straightforward, very simple. Um, I would highly advise if you only have a PlayStation 2 like me and you don't have a PlayStation, uh, PlayStation Portable PSP, then I would definitely play this game first, solely because the upgrades to the system that Persona 4 has, if you get used to those, this game ends up not being quite as fun as it could have been. Because, oh, that's right, they have this thing, as you can see in the middle of the circle, they have a triangle rush. That basically, that's just like auto battle, essentially. It's just everybody attacks until everything is dead. They just go. Um, tired or That's the second fight! You are a bitch! I fucking hate you! Alright, so, um, yeah, I mean, just the upgrades of the system, most notably the whole being able to control your party members thing, can just kind of frustrate you not having that. I know it did for me. Like, it just caused a little bit of frustration. Like, they had this, that was so smart and so, like, logical to have in a game. Why the fuck don't you have it now? What the hell is the goddamn matter with you? And so, um, I would highly advise playing this game first so you don't have to go through that. Because I did play Persona 4 first. Um, but Persona 4 is also the easier game. It's very, it is much easier than this game. I'm not sure why. It's definitely not only because of the fact that you can only control one of your party members. That is part of it. But yeah, Persona 4 is just easier overall. It was actually a pretty easy game, unfortunately. I think they kind of tried to make it easier for the, you know, try to make it have more appeal, I suppose. I don't know. So anyway, there's Persona 4. Uh, in a nutshell, and it's very good games. If you want it, you should look at it. You should definitely play them. Look at them, play them, have fun with them because they're awesome games. And 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 I have no idea when they're gonna come out with Persona 5. I'm not, I haven't even heard of them working on it yet. They should though. Oh, that's right. They also have they have a uh, two Persona. Well, not Persona games. They're actually called like Shin Megami Tensei Persona 3 and shit like that. They actually have two Shin Megami Tensei games on the DS. The first one is Devil Survivor, which is a very good game. It's actually kind of like a um, kind of like a strategy RPG almost a little bit. Um, more so than, you know, like this. There's not really any dungeon crawlings. You're pretty much put onto a map like, like it's like it's Fire Emblem, basically. Or like Final Fantasy Tactics. You're put on a map like that map with, you know, a bunch of grids. And, you know, you have your characters that can, you know, move around, blah 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 You have that kind of a game, or you have, um, Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey. Which, I've mentioned in Etrian Odyssey before, it's like that. It's a dungeon crawler, 
where like you're in the first person perspective and you're just wandering around the dungeon. You know, it's like a bunch of, you know, it's not like an actual dungeon. It's kind of, it's kind of like a bunch of paths, straight paths all around. And, you know, stuff happens, etc. So, those are other games to look into, I guess. I know I did those great justice. I know those explanations did those games great justice. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to... I'm getting a lot of time in here. So, anyway, yes. Play the Persona games. They're awesome. Anything with Shin Megami Tensei in the title is awesome. So, play it.